It's an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to address such a distinguished group of graduates here today. As a BU MBA graduate from another era, it is always impressive to come back and see this great university, outstanding faculty, and all of the extraordinarily talented students that make BU the great place that it is. I congratulate you all on your achievements. After Dean Freeman asked me if I would say a few words to all of you, I gave some thought on what topic I should discuss and what I should say. After conducting a small but informative survey, I reached two insightful conclusions. Over 90% of people who attend a commencement event can't remember who the speaker was five years later. And of the 10% who do remember, 95% of them can't remember what was said. Consequently, I feel very confident that I will not curtail your careers in any way. <laughs> and as we say in the venture capital industry, we have capped our downside. Second, after hearing such comments as, be really brief, don't lecture them, and give them helpful advice, got me focused on brevity and the key insights that might assist you with your careers and the decisions you will make over the upcoming years. I would share with you some real life lessons to assist you in making wise and productive career choices, drawing on the lessons I have learned and the things I experienced in my business career. As far as telling you what you should do with your life, that is totally up to you. I have no secret formula I can disclose to you. All of you have unique talents, different skills, varied interests, and widely different aspirations. I have been fortunate in my career to have been part of the executive management teams of three very successful technology startup companies, Parametric Technology, Vintage 89, Geotel Communications 95, Arrowpoint Communications, Vintage 2000. All three hit multi-billion dollar valuations, and all three had very successful IPOs. All three had major challenges and solved them in very different and unique ways. The last 10 years I spent as managing partner in an early stage venture capital firm, helping young entrepreneurs build companies and pursue their dreams. It wasn't that long ago that I sat in a commencement event like this one today, wondering what I would be doing with my career. I was working at a large energy company on a fast track and a very slow moving company. I felt underutilized, not challenged, and frustrated with my ability to impact anything going on in the company. I knew I had to make a change, but was unsure about how to pursue it and what the ramifications might be. Clearly, I was at a crossroads in my career. I was married, sole wage earner, and father of three young children. Not the best time to launch a new career with high risk. But without a change, I was destined to hang out, as Teddy Roosevelt would say in his famous Man in the Arena, with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. The career change worked out well for me, and now, having been involved in dozens of companies, both good and bad, I will share with you some of the key successes that hopefully you can take with your careers. I have five basic points. The first, make strategic, not tactical career moves. When choosing your career moves, always optimize on working with and for great people in great companies. They will challenge you, develop you, help you in becoming better business leaders. Understanding what makes them great is one of the most important training experiences you can be part of. It is critical at this junction in your career that you develop your skills. I would play down or ignore salary, title, office size, and all the other creature comforts. I spend a fair amount of time counseling young executives and family friends on career moves. Invariably, the discussion turns to job title and salary on how they are evaluating their alternatives. It always seems to me that a VP title or a slightly higher salary is more critical to them than working for a superior company or a legendary leader. Three times in my career, I took positions that paid less, were at best lateral moves, and trade off salary for equity. All worked out very well for me. As someone who has looked at thousands of resumes and hired hundreds of executives, 
one of the first things I zero in on is how successful were the companies this person worked for. A great boss will be advancing their career, and if they respect you and value your skills, they will take you along with them. Key piece of advice, look at the executives of the company you are with and ask yourself, is that who you would like to be in 10 to 15 years? If not, start planning your next career move. The first technology company I joined executed a hostile takeover, then was the victim of a hostile takeover during the four and a half years I was there. At first, I was shocked that all this was happening so fast, but soon I realized that I had gained the experience of a lifetime, was able to observe and be part of some extraordinary events, and most importantly, built a network of people that would help me through my entire career. Second, seek advice and opinions, particularly from customers. Continually ask advisors, service providers, peers, professors, friends, mentors, how do the best do it? Also, you will find that one of your biggest assets will be the relationships you have built while here at BU with your fellow students. You have spent two years studying with them, learning with them, socializing with them. Use these friendships to assist each other in providing insights and counsel for reaching better decisions. It is so much easier to stay connected today with the advent of all the social media technologies than it was when I was graduating. Also have tremendous empathy for the customer. They ultimately drive your success. Understand from their perspective what problems they are trying to solve and how you can assist them. I would encourage all executives to spend a portion of their time in customer-facing activities. During this process, you will discover that you learn more from your failures than your successes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. We all have. However, it's critically important to understand why your solution didn't work and how you could have done a better job. I can to this day remember the major failures I have had and every detail as to why they happened. A key part of receiving advice is to listen. Whenever I started a new position, I would always go and meet with all constituency groups that could impact my success, employees, customers, partners, and investors. In all cases, I would ask questions and solicit their opinions and perspectives. I find that this aspect of communication is frequently ignored by young executives. I always found that I would learn more from asking and listening than speaking and telling. Third, change is good. Embrace it. Most great companies have been built on and leveraged a significant change or major disruption in their ecosystem. Google, Facebook, Groupon, Cisco, Costco, pick your company, all have been successful by developing and executing on a new disruptive business model. The world is currently going through major disruptions in most industries. Healthcare, energy, clean tech, sustainability, food supplies, transportation, technology. It's a great time to be entering the business world with such upheaval going on. For small companies, change is what levels the playing field, creates opportunities, and shifts the balance of power. You should relish it, for it provides unparalleled opportunities. Use it to your advantage. Large established companies do not react well to change, and every significant technology change has created two or three major new companies. Change creates the opportunity to succeed. I can assure you that most of you during your career will be the victim of at least one major corporate restructuring, acquisition, divestiture, in which case you will lose your existing position. It's okay. Be prepared for it. Use it and use it to reassess where you are and how to reposition your career to new areas. Fourth, always focus on reality. Deal with reality, not optimism. Always provide a fair and accurate assessment of the situation, both for yourself and others. The advice you get is only as good as the information you provided to get it. As a board member of numerous companies, the company CEOs regularly want to provide overly optimistic plans, share only the good news, and keep the bad news from the board. We as investors and board members want all the news, 
particularly the bad news. We know bad things will happen. There is probably not any bad news we have not experienced or seen before. The great business executives focus on the bad news. Your credibility goes up if you present a balanced picture with both the good and the bad, and the advice you receive from your advisors, mentors, investors is far more valuable as it is based on unbiased and realistic information. In developing business plans, don't plan on pitching a perfect game. It rarely happens. Share honest, accurate, achievable information with high integrity. You will always get more credit for beating a realistic plan than falling short on an overly optimistic one. Also be realistic with yourself. I always knew what I was good at and where I needed help. No executive is perfect, but understanding your weaknesses is critical to your success. I would always develop a high degree of trust with some key employees in the areas I was the least competent in. I would frequently use advisors in these areas as well to verify key assumptions. Lastly, success matters. The key component of a great resume is demonstrated achievement and success, however it is measured. It can be a mature business, a startup, charitable foundation, lifestyle business, a private entity. Whatever it is, do it well. Define what success is and strive with all your energy to achieve it. Being a very competitive person, I would always take it personally. I would play with intensity and inspect that same level of commitment from my peers, employees. Success is infectious. When we look at a resume, the first thing I look at is what companies this person has worked for and how have those companies performed. I know a lot of average people work at great companies and some great people work at poor companies. However, it is always easier to explain what you accomplished at a great company than to explain how you did a good job in an underperforming company. In all cases, great companies are made from great people. Just to reinforce this point, I recently visited two of our high-flying companies. Both companies are experiencing hyper-growth and hiring enormous numbers of people. Both CEOs were very focused on the issues surrounding hiring and integrating new people. Both knew their industries well and could tell you the companies they wanted to hire from because those employees were smarter, harder working, and embraced similar cultural values while well, both had a list of companies to avoid at all cost. Once you have established yourself as an impact player with a track record of successes, opportunities come your way. One last anecdote. During a particularly challenging time at one of the companies I was running, we were facing some significant obstacles. My head of sales gave me a book to read. It was Shackleton's Expedition. He said, once you have read it, nothing in your life will ever be impossible again. It was great advice. We were able to sail through some rough seas, drive the company to a great success. In summary, I encourage all of you to draw on your experiences and education you have received here at BU. Make strategic career moves. Seek advice and opinions from key advisors and customers. Embrace change. Focus on reality and build an enviable record of success. You are our next generation of business leaders. The world is fraught with difficult problems and challenges. You are extraordinarily talented and well prepared. Use your combined skills to make the world a better place for the next generation. Also, as an added incentive, Dean Freeman will need speakers for future commencements. I hope many of you will be able to relate your secrets to success to future graduating classes. Congratulations on your accomplishments to date. I wish you the best in your careers.